How's it going guys? My name is Doe and I hope you're doing good. And today I want to discuss the new Shadow Touch Behemoths, which I wanted to call Flame Touch, but they're not Fire, they're Umbral. But anywho, let's go ahead and talk about those new variants, which are not just reskins that are now Umbral. It's going to be a pretty similar sort of mechanic or, I guess, adjustment as we saw with the Flameborn Behemoths in Blaze Escalation. So we have Shadow Touched, Nizaga, Drask, and... What's the other one? Koshai, that's that's the one, and these are these are pretty cool. These are really interesting changes that I found to be really fun, especially on Shadow Touch Nizaga. This is a very fun behemoth now, and you can interrupt Nizaga now, which I think I've probably already said before in a different video. Who knows? And that is what makes this fight pretty interesting. It also makes the fight pretty easy, but in any case, it is a fun fight because you have Nizaga going for these dm slides you boop it it looks pretty cool when you interrupt it on its own and you also have it going through portals which is another way to interrupt it sometimes it has its clones go through portals which isn't a hard thing to dodge but it is just an interesting aspect on its own nizaga also has these slam slam attacks where it'll wind up one slam with one arm and then it'll just go for the other hand and then keep doing that for a little bit so when that happens, definitely do not stand next to that and try and get towards his tail. You'll be safe at that point. But aside from, uh, for the other attacks, you just got these port like a lot of portal attacks. When he slams the ground with both hands, that doesn't hit you, at least not right now. They, they might change that. But what does happen is it'll summon a sort of a, a Nene demon from the depths. And that will leap from a portal and hit you a few seconds later which it gives you enough time to get stamina to dodge which is awesome that's what makes this attack fun it's not just like a hey he slammed you try to dodge the slam even though you can't and you get hit by a clone it's like no you got time to dodge you get a decent amount of time to sort of expect that and it's just recognizing that's gonna happen so that's the that's the shout touch nene as for the shout touched drask this is also a really cool fight and it really makes the Drask behemoth just enjoyable. It, it gives it a little justice, even though still waiting for that, that, that young Thunderdeep. But for Shadow Touch Drask, what happens is you've got this giant gecko chilling in Narnia. It's not trying to sell you car insurance. It's trying to freaking murder you. You know what I'm saying? It's trying to, trying to sell you some life insurance and then take it. It's rough. But Drask will be on the other side of the arena. And most of the time, what will happen is it'll slam down its hand. And if you're in, in Narnia, it's kind of weird because there's, there's two slam attacks with his hands. But anyway, it'll slam down his hand and it'll freaking portal you towards it or just like send out a, a giant gravity pull towards you and, and pull it towards itself. And when that happens, it will do a tail slam. So you have to dodge. Sometimes you, you won't be able to dodge because, you know, you'll be stuck on like some ledge. But most of the time, you'll have to dodge that and then you'll be golden. There's another tail swipe attack where it'll tail swipe you once, which is like a normal one. And if you dodge that, you don't have to dodge the follow-up attack. And by the way, I might not name all the attacks for these behemoths. I'm just going over the ones that I thought were really cool. So, there's that. Drask has a double charge, which is the first thing I've ever seen in the game, where it'll charge you once, and then back up and charge you again. This is an interesting move. It's not exactly that deadly, I don't think at least. But it is an interesting move, and it's also the first time I've ever seen it in the game, so that's pretty cool on its own. And it's got a attack where it'll send out a actual just gravity pull. It, it, it hits you with the Zarya ult. It's max charge, Gravitonia, and then if that is close enough to you, it'll pull you towards it, and then it'll just start shooting these orbs at you at a pretty fast rate. And that is a cool move because it seems balanced to me, right? Like the orbs aren't undodgeable. You can definitely dodge them, but it just seems cool how it grabs you and then tries to follow up with its own ultimate. It's funny. And I think that's that's mostly it for the interesting Drask attacks. And then the last behemoth we have is the Shadow Touch Koshai. So to preface this behemoth, it's Koshai. Koshai has some very um, questionable AI. But that is besides the point. The behemoth is still pretty cool. They changed the interrupt to make it to where it'll jump up in the air and like angle down at you. It wasn't always like that. Like it, it jumped in the air and it would like go for you. But it, it legit like it'll dive through portals and dolphin dive you. Like you're just the freaking deep end of a swimming pool. So 
that's a really cool interrupt. It's really hard to hit with most weapons, with most weapons, but it makes things like using the War Pike missile pretty freaking cool. It makes you feel pretty special about yourself. Its tail swipe is now going to be a double attack, just like the other behemoths. This time, though, dodging one tail swipe, I don't believe makes you immune to the rest, so definitely be careful. And to backpedal a little bit to the portal mechanic, the first time it goes through the portals, it's going to be an interrupt sort of phase. Once that's over and it goes through the portal again, most of the time, it'll go to a pretty far away place, you know, something we like to call Narnia around here, and it'll start casting orbs with its tail. And these orbs sort of split off into more orbs and they can hit you. This is not a very deadly mechanic and most of the time you can stand at its face. If you're like at its face, you should be good to a degree. Sometimes this tail will hit you, but for the most part, you should be pretty solid at that point. And I kind of wish that for this attack, the orbs had just more, like more orb spawning, which they probably didn't do that because they're not trying to fry the Switch player's handheld device, maybe. You know, <laughs> they ain't trying to be the, the, the Switch killers, right? They don't want, want DOS to be that, that kind of game. Oh, wait. I think they do. I forgot. Koshai has an attack where I think when it goes Aether mode, it starts to send out these, uh, like, basically mini shroud orbs, like the things that explode and bring you to one health. It sends out, like, I don't know, a lot of those things, and they explode at an offset time, but it's pretty dang close to being at the same time. And that, I think, will murder the FPS of a Switch player. I'm not positive. It's kind of like a joke, but... I'm I'm actually curious if it's gonna affect some of y'all because it, to me it seems like it might, but hey, who knows, man? Who knows? We'll find out on the 11th. Now, I'm pretty sure that's it for the attacks that I thought were interesting, I guess. But these variants, dude, these are interesting, like on their own, and they're a lot more fun to me personally than the Flameborn ones. And I've tested them for a while. It's not just like a oh I tried it for once. I tried like you know one hunt. And I think they're better. It's more like I tested it and I've given it a decent amount of thought. And so far, I'm enjoying these a lot more. And I think the reason why is because there's very little, I guess, bullet hell mechanics on these fights. Like for Drass, there's a bit of a bullet hell mechanic, but it's not like it's unbearable. Like they don't track you. On Blazer Zakiri and Nasher, the fireballs kind of track you to like they predict your movement. For like before they're cast like that's how it works on those behemoths i don't enjoy that one bit but on these shadow touch behemoths it's just a lot more you're fighting the actual behemoth and not like some dude with a, a gatling gun that shoots these destructive orbs at you or fireballs at you you're just fighting the behemoth for the most part and that's like that's what i enjoy i enjoy the fights where it is just you and the behemoth you're dodging your dodge is very fluid that's what I like. I don't like this whole, yeah, uh, the fireball went to a behemoth, you know, and it kind of just hits you. Not it, chief. That is not it for me, chieftain. But other than that, I will say that this, the idea of having flameborn behemoths and blaze escalation and shadow touch behemoths and shock escalation makes me wonder what's going to happen in shock escalation. Because shock escalation is a really good escalation. It's really great. It's got some amazing amplifiers that just make it so much fun. But it's missing a lot of stuff. Like, there's no shock variants. The environment's a little bland. So I'm hoping they do, like, a, a, a shock escalation touch-up in the future. And when they do, or if they do, I'll be curious to see what that's about. But that's the video, guys. And those are the Shadow Touch Behemoths. Hopefully it's helped you in some way. It turned out to be, like, a guide. I'm not sure what my goal is with, with this video. But I think it turned out pretty well. Anywho, if you guys like the video, make sure to like. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel for more content. And if you want to support the channel, make sure to use my Epic Games support card code in the Epic Games store. It's Odo at checkout. That helps me out a ton. And it is very supportive because whatever you buy, I get a small kickback at no extra, no extra charge to you. Check out my stream on Twitch at TV4 slash Odo. I said that very fast. I apologize. But uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.